you know, just want to talk a little bit about what's been going on. And it's been, you know, quite a summer and I guess spring rolls into summer, uh, but, you know, a, a lot of new adventures, um, a lot of meeting a bunch of new people for the first time, meeting a bunch of players for the first time. Uh, but it, it's been quite an experience and, you know, it's our eight week period has been good uh, for us as a program. Uh, there's still things that, that we want to get to. We want to clean up. We want to finish. We want to complete. Uh, but we're getting there. And I feel good about the progress that we made this summer and, and where we're going as a program. So, you know, I'm happy. I'm excited. Um, I'm, I'm fired up that it's now the page has turned to August. And, you know, here in a few weeks, school will be starting. There'll be more people around. Uh, we'll get back to work as a team. And we're inching closer and closer. I think I saw on the internet the other day, maybe yesterday was a hundred days until uh, the opener. So we're looking forward to that. We're counting down the days and you know, we're looking forward to a fun season. So with that, I will open it up for questions. We'll start with Mark Brennan. Mark, go ahead. Hey, Micah and uh, Chelsea, uh, uh, congrats on the, the, the new gig. Uh, nice to see you here. Thank you. Hey, Micah, can you tell us what your goals were over the summer, uh, given all the new faces you have? Was it about getting guys in shape? Was it about everybody getting to know any everybody? Can you just take us through that and, and let us know how you thought you did toward reaching those goals? Thanks. Yeah, Mark, I think it was a combination of everything. Um, you know, the, these guys had, you know, they were with Greg a lot and Skinnis in, in our strength program and things that we needed to do, you know, getting guys back into shape, getting guys in shape, um, getting them prepared for what we were going to do on the court. I think that was the biggest thing. Uh, introducing myself, you know, my staff and what we were going to do and the kind of expectations that we were going to have as well. Uh, er everything's new right now. And even for guys that are seniors or have played college basketball for a long time, you know, it's different from how I want to do things. So we spent a lot of time really teaching and introducing a lot of stuff. Um, but, you know, we had to mix in getting to know each other as well. And like I said, there's, there's guys that we recruited that we brought here that'll play for us that I never got a chance to meet, you know, only on the phone maybe on the Zoom call through text messages. Uh, so there was a period of that as well. Um, and I think we've gotten through that period and you know, where we're getting to know each other. We're getting to know each other's games. Uh, they're figuring out how I like to do things. And like I said, it, I feel like we had a productive summer, uh, but now we have to carry it into the fall when we all get back together. Okay, Ben Jones, go ahead. Hey, Mike, how's it going? Good, Ben. How are you? No, no complaints. I, I'm curious, when you bring in a lot of guys that might not have a lot of eligibility left at the collegiate level, and then you've got guys that have been in a program for a really long time, how do you kind of mesh the different levels of investment that they might have in the program or the different experiences and, and you know, the, ostensibly the gun for hire guy versus a guy like John Hare that's really, you know, put a lot of time and energy into what they've built so far? You know, it's a delicate balance in terms of what you're looking for when you bring guys in. And we looked for a specific player, maybe a specific talent, but what we weren't going to bring in were one-year renegades, right? Guys that were just coming in just to get their stats and build their status. Uh, winning was a big part of it. If winning wasn't important to you, and you probably weren't going to fit with me. Uh, so you know, we, we invested or we vested the guys that we brought in to see if they would fit, um, you know, being able to have John, you know, and Miles Dredd, like you know, the guys that are coming back, Sam and Seth, like Dalian, Caleb, you know, we knew who they were. We knew what they were about and we needed to add the right fits with those guys. And uh, I feel like we did that. And like I said, we didn't take a one-year renegade. We took some one-year players 
one year transfers, but guys that would fit the culture, um, guys that could help us continue to build this culture, but also guys that wanted to win in this season. All right, David Eckerd. Hey, Micah, how you doing? I'm doing great, David. Awesome. Um, I guess just kind of, you know, off of that, I, now that everything seems to have kind of cleared a little bit, I, do you feel like you've met all the needs that, that you had maybe positionally um, in the transfer portal this summer? We do. Um, you know, we, we added size, uh, which, which I thought was going to be important for us. But, you know, we didn't just add size just to bring in tall guys. Uh, I think, you know, length, athleticism, guys being able to move was really important in terms of what we wanted to do defensively and how we wanted to play defensively. Um, but also guys that, you know, were pretty skilled as well. Uh, so I feel like we fit those needs. Now, adding more size pushed some guys down the list a little bit and down the line in terms of position. So you may see some more guys playing on the wing a lot more uh, that maybe haven't done it as much. But, you know, that puts the onus on them as well to improve their games, uh, get back to how they played, you know, coming out of high school, maybe early in their careers here. So, you know, I feel good about what we added and how it fits together, and that's the most important thing. Joe Giano. Hello, Michael. Um, I wondered, what have you done to help build the trust? You mentioned a lot of new guys. Um, how did you uh, work to get acquainted with them and build that trust that you're going to need? You know, Joe, uh, uh, the biggest part of it is time, right? It, it just takes time, and I think you know, having conversations, just being able to let them know who I was, let them know who I was about. I think really getting on the court in our workouts and kind of building that sweat equity with them where they know that you're invested. Um, they know that, you know, you're trying to make them the best that they can be. That that was huge for us. Um, but also just being around. Like, like, as much as I could, I wanted to be there. I wanted to be around like we have an open door policy where guys are free to come up to the office but you know we're going to meet them at training table we're going to meet them in the weight room we're just we're just going to be there for them and you know, we built that trust i think they have a great understanding now of my personality you know when you talk to somebody on the phone you may not understand who they are uh, you may not understand what they're looking for. Uh, but the things that I told them, the things that I talked about, you know, I've tried to prove. Uh, I've tried to prove that in different ways throughout this summer, which I think has, has helped to, you know, lessen the gap in terms of building trust. And, you know, it, it takes time to build trust. And I think we're, we're close to where we need to be. Spencer Ripick. Um, I just want to know how difficult it has been learning such a new camp, or learning a new campus, especially one as large as Penn State, and getting comfortable with all the new facilities. You know what, Spencer? That's a great question um, because I would tell you right now, being honest, if one of my sorry, you guys will get to know this about me. One of, I don't know, I guess it's a a, a strength and a flaw is I'm brutally honest in terms of what I say. Uh, Spencer, I, I still don't know the campus. I know it enough, uh, but you know, you know what helped me was June. We had a bunch of recruiting visits and I got to sit in the back of the golf cart and listen to some of the other coaches as they talked about, you know, what building was what and where you had class, you know, where, you would have classes, uh, what majors are where. Uh, so I'm still learning. I, it, it's taking time. I can get in my car and I can get to a lot of different places. I may not be able to tell you the street names, but I can get to where I need to go. Uh, and I can do that on campus as well. I can do a campus tour. Uh, and I, you know, if I don't know the, if I don't know the answer and I tell the recruits this, I'm not going to lie to you and tell you, I do know, you know, I'm going to get the right people to help me and that's where 
you know, a guy like Nick Colello has been so helpful. You know, Adam Fisher, who knows the campus so well and went to school here, he's being helpful in that in that way. Um, and even, you know, our guys like Bo Wagner, one of our GAs, it's been great to have those guys really help me and, and help me learn, you know, campus and the community and uh, getting through all the facilities. Okay, Corey Geiger. Micah, you're involved with uh, a lot of really high profile recruits. I know you can't talk about them specifically, but how vital would it be? How important would it be if you could land one or two of these guys? What kind of momentum would that do for everything at this point? You know, Corey, that's, you know, a goal of ours. And, you know, when I put together the staff, like what's our staff going to look like? What are our strengths going to be? And we have a lot of people person or is that how you say it I don't know you guys could help me on that how, uh, on our staff like guys that love communicating uh, guys that love building relationships and they've gotten us in the door with a lot of really good players and now it's on us to kind of close the deal and I'm, I'm looking forward to you know having guys come more June was great for us you know, we had a lot of visits in June. I'm looking forward to having students on campus. I'm looking forward to the football weekends. Um, things are going to help us sell Penn State and, and really close the gap and close the door. So we want to really ride this wave and ride this momentum uh, to push us forward in what we're doing recruiting. And like, you know, it's not going to be a one year thing for you. Like we, we want to continue to find the right players to fit us. And if they're high profile guys, they're high profile guys. If they're not, they're not. Um, you know, my goal isn't to win, you know, the, the battle in, uh, you know, the November signing date, right? We have to turn whoever it is. We have to make them better players while they're here. Uh, so we have to find the right fits for us. And if they're a five-star guy, if they're a four-star guy, three-star guy, two, one, whatever it may be, if they fit Penn State, we're going to go you know, all in on those guys uh, and see where it leads us. Andrew Clay. Hey, Coach. Andrew Clay, WTAJ in Altoona. I hate that this has to be my first question to you, but given what COVID has been in the news lately, how much is that part of the conversation between you and the team or you and the athletic department right now as things move forward? Yeah, good question, Andrew. That's, um, you know, obviously with the times that we're in, you know, things are constantly changing. And I think being able to have last season uh, really kind of prepared everybody for what possibilities there may be. Um, and things could change really quickly. Uh, like I said, like you never know, but you have to be prepared for everything. So, you know, we have a great, uh, training staff, you know, that that is really going to lead us in terms of what we need to do as a program, uh, the kind of protocols that we're going to follow. Um, they're going to push us in the right direction and in our administration as well. And we want to keep everybody safe. You know, those are conversations that we want to continue to have. We want to continue to educate our team about, you know, what's going on in the world, what's going on in the county what's going on in this community and then things are going to be different once students come back so you know we still have to uh be safe in what we do um, and take care of each other and look out for each other uh, to keep each other safe so we can you know open up and have football games with people there we can open up and have basketball games with people there um, and that's what we're working towards so you know, we're going to lean on our administration. We're going to lean on, you know, our, our athletic training staff to push us in the right direction in terms of what we're doing. But we're constantly having those conversations with our team to make sure that we're keeping each other safe. Dave Melandra. Hey, Coach. David Melandra with uh, Nittany Lions Wire, which is part of USA Today. So during your introductory press conference, you mentioned that you talked to Jim Ferry and Pat Chambers to get a sense that that these were their teams that you're trying to build off of. Can you just talk about what type of system that you're trying to make of your own? And when you're at Purdue, 
what did you see from Penn State last year that that drew you to draw to the to Penn State? You know, one of the things that you know when I go back and watch, um, you know, obviously I've, I've had a chance to coach against Penn State, uh, so you know, two years worth uh, of data that I have uh, watching, and you know, obviously the things that that stand out were one how together they were uh, how hard they played you know the, the kind of how they laid it all out there for each other you know that was obvious when you watched like those are things that we have to build off of i think having you know john Harris, the heart and soul of this group right like how hard he plays he if if you could put somebody up on a billboard in terms of, and put what hard work looks like you know he would be the guy because of what he's done throughout his career in terms of getting better, in terms of uh, how hard he's played, the kind of things that he's done. So, like, he helps continue to drive that mantra of how hard we need to play to compete. Like, Miles Dredd in the same way. Like, guys that are older, that have been here, um, those are things that they can teach to the young guys right away. They can teach to the new guys right away terms of what we need to do to be successful in the Big Ten. And now, you know, I can add in the things that I've learned and, you know, from from being at, at Purdue for those four years, but also things that, you know, when you win, it was no matter what level you win at, there are a lot of things that are consistent within that. So, you know, we won a lot of games in Boston, right? We, we had a lot of success in the playoffs in Boston. We did the same at Butler. Like you have to bring those same qualities here to have those, you know, the success. But, you know, Michigan State's talking about the same exact things that I'm talking about. Purdue's talking about the same things I'm talking about. Ohio State, whoever it may be. Now the the magic is doing that on a nightly basis, um, doing that consistently as a program. Um, and that's how you get to the upper echelon of winning. John Stauber. Hey, Micah. Uh, to go back to COVID real quick, are you vaccinated? And can you give us any estimate of what the program's at as far as vaccination? Is that something you're pushing for within your players and staff? John, I am, um, you know, that's probably a question I'm not allowed to answer uh, due for, you know, medical reasons. Like we won't. And that's something that'll be consistent throughout throughout this season. You know, we're we're not going to release kind of what we're doing as a program. Uh, just like I said, the main thing that we're going to do is we're going to continue to educate our players about what we need to do to stay safe, what we need to do to have a season, to have a successful season, and what that looks like. So. You know, I continue to lean on our, our group, our medical staff, our administration, um, our university to tell us, you know, what policies we need to follow. Uh, but, you know, we're, we won't talk about, you know, our vaccination rate as a staff or as a uh, program. We're just going to follow what we need to do to have a, have a season with people in the stands, hopefully. Mark, uh, Mark Bogenrich. Michael, how are you today? Great. I was trying to find you, Mark. I see you now. No, no worries. I'm doing awesome. Mark, you did. Okay, got me now? Better? Okay, thanks. You mentioned a little bit about John Harrah. How did you re-recruit him back to Penn State, and how is his – Did what impact did his decision to stay have upon you personally? You know what? Um, a big part of John returning to Penn State was Penn State, right? Penn State sold itself. It, it's been doing it for four years for him. Like, you know, I, I obviously get a chance to work with guys that uh, have gone to school here. And, you know, when I got here, they told me how special this place was. And until you get here, until you're ingrained in it each and every day, you don't realize it. Um, John's realized it, and he knows how special this place is, and he's invested a lot into this place. And, you know, 
Penn State's going to invest right back into him in the same exact way. So that was an easy sell. And, you know, I, I just had it the, the part of, you know, like we talked about earlier, building trust with him. Like I, I'm, I'm not going to sell him on uh, trying to be somebody that I'm not and really working to you know, give him the experience that he needs to finish here successful. Uh, that was a big part of the set was here's how I can help you grow your game a little bit. Here's how I can help us have a great season. Uh, but I want him to have a great experience and finish this the right way because he's earned it. He's deserved it. So getting him back was huge. Uh, you know, I, I was really excited. Like when, when he told me that he was coming back, you know, I'm doing sprints around our, our office uh, because I know how important he is to this program. You know, I, I sat there last year, you know, he got 10 offensive rebounds against us last year in Mackey. Like, you know, let's go do that again. That's fun. You know, it wasn't fun when I was sitting on the Purdue bench, but it'd be great when I was sitting on this one. So um, having him be able to help us uh, build the culture in, in the right way. Uh, like I said, he's he's the poster boy for hard work in terms of what you can do as an individual when you put the time in. Uh, so it's it's huge to have him back, and, and we're really excited about that. All right, we have time for three more for Coach. We're going to start with Nate Bauer, then go to Daniel Galen, and then Joel Neuschwander. So go ahead. Hey, Mike, how are you? I'm great, Nate. How are you doing? I'm good. Hey, I'm just I'm just wondering. Um, once you guys, once you got these guys onto the court, finally, how did they match or not match whatever your preconceived notions were about the the type of players that they were and the type of group that you had? Um, which might be a, a an end around to asking how good do you think these guys can be this year? You know what that that I didn't come in with any like preconceived notions. Like I, I've I got a chance to watch a bunch of games. Um, you know, obviously I coached in the same league, so I saw them up close, but then I, I saw them as I was, you know, maybe you're watching different teams throughout the year, not necessarily, maybe I'm scouting Wisconsin, you know, so I watch a Penn State Wisconsin game. So I've seen them in a lot of different lights, but I didn't want to come in and necessarily say, like, this is who you are. Like, I wanted to see it, you know, up close, you know, it, um, you know, up close and personal on the floor. So also wanted to see how they responded to me. Uh, they responded to the things that we did. So I wanted to make them a little bit uncomfortable in, in terms of what they did. I wanted to teach them some new things, teach them some things they maybe hadn't done before. Um, you know, stuff that, that maybe we're doing at the NBA level that I wanted to test them uh, to see if they could do it or to see if they couldn't do it but to see how quickly they could pick it up. And that's the biggest thing for me is how well do you learn? How well do you take things from whether it's film or whether it's talking, how do you translate that to the court? You know, those are things that I had to learn and I wanted to learn early uh, to see how this would fit. Like with our group this year, like we, we've got guys that have, you know, if you look at the nucleus of guys that have come back, you know, they've done significant things in this conference. Right now, we, they have to do it on a everyday basis. Um, you know, they can't lean on somebody else to carry the load. They have to do it, and that's a big part of it. But we also brought in some good pieces to help them do that, to lighten the load. We have a – if – I don't know, when you get on Kempom and they start doing – uh, years or average years of a team, we're going to be at the top of that list <laughs> this year uh, on Ken Palm. So having a bunch of older, experienced guys that have played a lot of games, that have been in a lot of situations, is going to be helpful for us. Um, I've been able to see how they've picked up what we're teaching as a staff and how that's you know translating to how they're playing when we're out there together. So I don't, I don't know. I, I can't, you know, I can't tell right now. It's a, um, that's the fun part of it for me. 
Like I, I'd love to see us play somebody else right now to see how it translates. But, you know, you have so many guys and in the summertime, like you're not going to push through anybody that's banged up a little bit. You don't want to do that. So like we'll get a chance this week to play a lot more to really see how they're picking up what we're teaching. And, uh, and maybe I'll have a better answer for you, uh, later this, later this fall. <laughs> Daniel Gallon. Hey, Micah, uh, with so many new uh, players coming in, so many new pieces, how have you seen some of the, the returning guys? How have you seen them kind of embrace those guys coming in? Is there more competition? How have you kind of seen that chemistry come together? It is, uh, they are definitely embracing the new guys coming in. And I think if you walk by a training table, you know, while guys are eating dinner and, and hear the noise coming out of there, you would, uh, you would say that, yeah, these guys are starting to come together a little bit. Like, that's the fun part for me. Like, it's not forced. Uh, but you throw some different personalities together, and you get to see how they mesh. You get to see how they react to each other. So whether it's guys playing pool and getting on each other about different things or whether it's, you know, Miles Dredd versus Jalen Pickett just talking about different guys in the NBA. Um, that part of it's been fun. Like, you know, Sam Sessoms is a loud guy and he talks all the time. So he's leading the charge. So, you know, if a Jelani White, who's more quiet and reserved, and the first day he walks in and Sam is just yelling at him in terms of not yelling at him, he's just being Sam. Uh, that's going to get you out of your shell a little bit, right? There, you know, talking about his pool game or talking about who his favorite NBA team is or what city he's from. Like, that's how we bonded. And they've come together. And it's and it's not on the court. They've come together off the court in, in their own ways. And, uh, you know, they beat us in a, in a wiffle ball game as well. So I think that helped them come together a lot more. All right, last question for Coach to Joel Nishwander. Hey, Coach, uh, what has it been like to be uh, reunited with Coach Collins? Uh, how has your previous experience coaching together kind of helped you prepare for the season? And uh, what has he brought to the table for you guys as a coaching staff and as a team? He, it's, it's been, you know, really fun. Like, you know, we, we've, he's probably been the one person that has kind of seen me grow in this profession, right? I was, when I worked with him last was, you know, I started in 2003 um, and, you know, I was director of basketball operations and now we're reunited and I'm a head coach. Uh, but, you know, he's been kind of there the entire time. Like I, he's a guy that I talk to, you know, throughout different seasons and you know, just pick his brain for advice and everything else. So like what he brings is, you know, obviously one with our staff, um, you know, he knows me, we've worked together. Like he, he's the one that, you know, kind of gets the, the questions or the other things from the rest of the staff. And he brings it to me like, Hey, will you go and ask coach if he'll do this or if we'll do this. So he, he's the buffer, uh, right now in terms of, of coming in and asking, you know, tough questions of, about different things. And then he's got a great energy to him on the court. Um, you know, for, for his, uh, just a, a little guy. And then, then he starts talking and his voice starts booming. It, 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 uh, wakes up the gym, you know, when, when he starts talking and he starts getting into guys and getting after guys. So, um, I know a couple of guys last week when we walked over, they, they told me it's, uh, he's the, he's the bad cop to my good cop every once in a while. So, uh, I can be nice to the guys all the time because I got, Coach Collins there to to uh, get after him if we need to. So it's been fun. The experience has been fun. Um, I'm glad that he's here. I'm glad that he's able to, you know, we talked about winning earlier. You know, he, he was at Marquette when they won a lot of games and they put a lot of guys into the NBA. And now bringing that experience with them here um, is going to be really beneficial for us.